This video series is designed to give you a practical guide on how to find the best trumpet gear for yourself. It's not meant to be a course in math physics, but what I'm going to do is combine a bunch of science figured out by guys way smarter than me with over 40 years of observation and experience both as a player and working with lots and lots, got to be thousands of players of all different skill levels. So you think about what's available in the marketplace today. There's so many different trumpets and there's so many different mouthpieces and so many different ideas. It seems like figuring out what the best gear for you would be is harder than figuring out the secret of life. Do you know what the secret of life is? No, what? This. Your finger? One thing, just one thing. You stick to that and everything else don't mean shit. That's great, but what's the one thing? That's what you gotta figure out. In the movie City Slickers, Curly left it up to Mitch to figure out what the one thing was to the secret of life. I've learned that when you're trying to find the best equipment for yourself, there is one thing that is by far the most important thing, one goal you should go after. And if you achieve that goal, you're going to be way on the way to finding the best gear for yourself. And that one thing is... I've got to have some fun with this. Relative intonation. I was fortunate enough to have studied with Bill Cardwell, who was the a trumpet player, but also a scientist. And he's the guy who put the final nail in the coffin about how to design and build trumpets that were in tune with themselves below the level of human discrimination. And when you have a trumpet and eventually a setup, which would be a mouthpiece and a trumpet, that's as in tune with itself as possible, the relative intonation is so good, you've got really everything you need. Because what happens is the Harmonics reinforce each other, you get great overtones, and if you're playing in the upper register, you get great undertones. This not only gives you a big, full, resonant sound, but it also makes it easier to play. You're creating the fundamental. Mother Nature's given you the rest of the harmonic series, and what I call it is free gas. Well, the way Bill started working on this was he was a fine Dixieland player, but he also loved classical music. He used to go to the uh, Bach Festival in Carmel every year every year and he was fascinated by trumpet players that could play the piccolo trumpet especially Brandenburg number no. two and we're going to talk more about Bill in a future series but right now let's hear what he had to say about designing a trumpet for the Brandenburg in his own words. The hardest thing any trumpet player does that I knew of was play the Brandenburg so um, I wanted to build a trumpet that could be on which the Brandenburg could be played easier. If the high note is in tune with the, if, the, if all the notes are in tune with each other, they're easier to play. One of the reasons is they're physically easier because the, the harmonics are in tune. The, the harmonics are higher, they're more defined up there. The um, high trumpets that I built had better peaks than some of the, some of the previous piccolo trumpets didn't have very good resonances at all. The trumpet player was doing it all with his tremendous skill. When you start to buzz your lips in the mouthpiece, you're buzzing all kinds of different sine waves. You're buzzing really high ones and medium ones and low ones and the whole bit. And each one of these sine waves has the potential to excite a resonance in your system, assuming the resonance is there. So again, we're going to start with this simple sine wave. You'll see it and hear it here. The next screen is going to be, we're going to add a trumpet sound. It's going to actually be a player playing a low C. And you'll hear all the harmonics come in because it's a very complex sound, the sound that the trumpet has. And you'll also see it on the plot here. So this next sound is a very well in tune setup, generating a low C.
you can hear all the colors in the sound and everything. The next slide is going to be the same setup, but we made it out of tune, and you'll hear the difference in the sound. As you can hear, the overall output dropped. The sound got more stuffy, not resonant, and you can even see it on the graph as well. The setup that was in tune with itself gave a whole lot of output. Big harmonic sound, full and open. And the system that was out of tune with itself gave much less output and wasn't a nice sound. It was closed. It was err. It was just not a good sound. So the idea is to get your equipment, your setup, as in tune with itself as possible. The best relative intonation you can get. Because then, when you put in a minimum amount of effort, you'll get a maximum amount of output. Or if you put in more effort, you'll get even more output. But when it's out of tune with itself, you don't get the help from Mother Nature. You don't get the harmonic series generating all the beautiful overtones. So that's why being in tune is extremely important. What determines how well in tune a trumpet is? It's actually the air column. And that's easy to understand at its basic level. The air column is the air inside the tubes of a wind instrument. It's an easy concept to understand, but what does it really mean? The simplest air column that I can think of is a Coke bottle. And you have some Coke in it or some fluid in it, and you blow across the top. And you get a tone, a single tone. It's a very simple air column. And if we were to pour some more liquid in here, we would expect the pitch to go higher because there's less air, smaller air column. So let's take it a step further and say we get a bunch of different Coke bottles. We get some real little ones and some medium sized ones and some really, really big ones. And we put them in a church and we're going to call it a pipe organ. Now the thing about a pipe organ is each pipe is responsible for the intonation of one note. And that pipe does not affect the intonation of the note next to it. So for example, let's say you lose your mind and decide you want to make a pipe organ and you discover that the low F natural is, is flat. Well, you get a hacksaw, you saw off part of that pipe till you get it in tune, and now the low F natural is in tune. But that adjustment you've made to the pipe does not affect any of the other notes. The problem with a trumpet is the trumpet has a complex air column. Each position of the trumpet, for example, the open position, second, all the different valve combinations, they're responsible for the relative intonation of at least six notes over a two octave range. And if you make an adjustment to the air column, you change the size of a pipe somewhere, it does not just affect the pitch of one note, but it does mode shifting. It affects, affects the pitch of many different notes. And some will get flat, some will get sharp, some will stay the same. You're not going to change the intonation of an instrument by changing where the braces are or putting a half round bead in the bell instead of a round bead in the bell. It's all about the air column. As you've seen and heard from the examples I've given, getting your setup as in tune as possible is the most important thing to help with sound, range, endurance, and all the things that challenge us as trumpet players. And in successive videos, I'm going to show you how to find that and how to find the best in-tune equipment you can get and also how to adjust your equipment so that it's as in-tune as possible to give you the maximum benefit for the least amount of effort. Or as I mentioned earlier, free gas.